Hey, what's up everyone? Mark Price here at devslopes.com and in this exciting video, we are going to create our very first node uh, API or rather a uh, server or API or both, whatever you want to call it. We're going to create our very first one and this is awesome. This is just the coolest stuff. You're going to find that if you've never done this before that it's absolutely fun uh, and gives you all the power, okay? Uh, so well, first things first is NPM. Okay, it's called the Node Package Manager. And what the Node Package Manager does is allow us to install packages for our project. So basically, think of it this way. Some programmer or programmers, they create some code. They say, I need some code that does this. Let's say I want some code that can do formatting of dates and times so people can make calendar apps. So what they do is they create some code in a package and they send it or they upload it to NPM, which hosts all of these packages. And then people can actually download these packages for free uh, straight from their terminal uh, and they can use them in their projects and so we'll be using the node package manager today and as long as you are developing with node and building uh, apps on the back end you will always be using the node package manager so get used to it and let's just show you a couple things here find packages so let's say um, encryption you want to you want to be able to encrypt things well look at this people have created packages on encryption okay Different users, boom, boom, boom. Uh, and you can it's searching by best overall. Okay, that's their algorithm for finding which packages are which. So you can click the package, okay? And you can see how many collaborators on it. This looks like just maybe one person. Five downloads in the last week, 15 downloads last month. It's not a very big package, okay? So we can click popularity now, okay? And this one has 16,000 downloads in one day and 437,000 downloads in the last month. So this package right here is clearly one that's being used a lot. And so that's what you can do. You can search for packages and you can find out information about them and then you can use them in your projects. So that's NPM. NPM comes with Node. So when you install Node, it automatically includes the Node Package Manager. So I'm gonna close it out of this window. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project. So I'm gonna create a new folder here on my desktop. And we're gonna call this first API. We're going to go into the terminal. And you can do this with your uh, file system if you'd like, your user interface. I'm going to go into my desktop, CD desktop, CD first API. Okay. And if I LS here, there's nothing uh, in this folder because we haven't created anything yet. So what do we need to do to start working with our very first project? Well, we are going to need a JavaScript file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. Uh, you can do that with Atom or brackets, or whatever IDE you want, or I'm gonna do it very quickly here in the Mac terminal, okay? So I'm gonna to say touch, and then we're gonna just gonna call this server.js. So now we have our file there, server.js. Now the next thing we need to do is initialize this as a um, NPM or node project, more or less. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say NPM init, okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to walk us through setting up our project to be able to work with the Node Package Manager so we can start downloading packages and things. So what do we want the name of the project to be is asking. So I'm going to make this a little bigger here so you can see it. So we'll call this first API. Oh, you are a friend of characters. My bad. First API. We'll name it the same thing. Version 1.0.0 is fine. Description. This is the first API. Entry point, yes. And you can press enter on all of these things here. Uh, they're, they're all optional. Enter, enter, keywords, author, Mark Price. You can put your license in there. Is this okay? Yes. All right, so now if I type in ls, we now have a package.json file here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open this folder in brackets. So let me open brackets. We're going to go to open folder on the desktop, and we are looking for first API. And I'm going to click open. So in first API, we have a package.json and a server.js that's empty. So here, let's look at the package.json. So it gave us, um, so what's in here is the things that we entered in when it asked us for things, okay? And we have scripts, main description, okay? But there's actually something missing here, and it's the actual packages that we're going to use. So how do we actually install a package so it can be used? Well, since we're building our very first server, 
we need to work with a package called Express. Express and Node go hand in hand, and Express is what we're going to use to uh, create web requests, or rather, Express can handle incoming web requests, and it knows what to do with them. Okay, it allows us to work with REST and uh, take requests and send uh, responses back to the clients. So that's what Express does. It works hand in hand with Node. It's not required, but uh, if you have some type of web API with Node, you're likely using Express. So I want to install that first things first. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is inside of our directory here, where the package.json is, we are going to say npm install dash dash save. Okay, that means we want to save it to package.json, meaning we want to save it, we want to put a reference to it in here. So whenever this project, let's say, let's say on Git and someone else downloads it, it knows that we need to work with Express. And we're just going to say Express. What's happening now is it is uh, interfacing with the NPM servers and downloading the actual package itself. Okay. Now, if we come back into here, look at this. There's a new section here called Dependencies, and it says we require Express. And what this little caret means here is it's getting the latest version of Express. Okay. Very cool. So we now have Express installed, and what's really cool. If we open our finder here, um, actually, let's just do it here from the desktop here. If we open our folder, we now have a node modules folder with Express. And here's the code that the writers of Express created. It's all right here. It's really cool, right? So we've got our node modules. We can start working with it. Now, let's say, just for fun, I delete the node modules folder. We no longer have the code for Express, OK? There are, if we use Express, our app will break. Well, the benefit of having of doing that dash dash save, if we didn't do dash dash save, it would have created the node modules folder and it would have created Express and brought it in, but our app doesn't know that it's supposed to be there. So by doing the dash dash save, we're saying, hey code, hey hey node, our node baggage manager, make sure that we've got uh, Express in there. Okay. So now what I can do is in my terminal, let's say I've just cloned this project from GitHub, I can just do npm install. And it's going to go through all of those dependencies in your package.json, and it's going to reinstall them. And watch as I open up the folder here, and node modules is now back. Okay, So if you want a package to always be with your project in your code, make sure you always do the dash dash save. And a little long-winded, but it's important to know. It's a rookie mistake. Okay, Lots of new people, they forget to do that. And then uh, if, they, if they lose it later on, um, they have to remember to install it. So that's really cool, we have ne but we haven't shown you how to actually make an app yet. So what we've got so far is we've got um, the node package manager initialized inside of our project with a node modules folder and a package.json folder which or file which describes our project a little bit. Let's create our very first server. var express. We're going to create a variable called express equals require express. We're using the unique yode, uh, node require statement here. And what it's doing is it's going to go Whenever you use require, it's going to go into that node modules folder, and it's going to grab the package out of it. And it's taking whatever uh, the w whatever way they designed it, and they're taking that and shoving it in a variable. It could be an object. It could be a function. We really don't know uh, unless we start working with the package over and over again, or if we look at the code. So we're grabbing the package and sticking it here in a variable. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to create an app. We're going to say var app equals express. So clearly, Express is a function that returns something. It might be returns an object of some kind. But we grab it over here, and then we go ahead and uh, in initiate, initiate it um, by putting the parentheses at the end. It's a function. So I could also have just done this. I could have taken this, like so. Are you with me so far? And then I could have done this and put parentheses at the end of it. And then we don't even need it at all. So what it's, it's the same exact code. We're requiring it, and then we put exp we grab the package, and then whatever it returns, we're actually calling the function on it. it. goes into app. But it's more common to explicitly put it here in case we actually need to reference it again. We won't in this example, though. OK, so what we've done is we've just required a package that allows uh, the incoming of requests and the sending back of responses. It, it, it manages all that for us. OK? Now what we're going to do is we're going to say app.get. OK, and then some single quotes there, a forward slash, put a function as the second parameter. OK, the second parameter of this function is a function. OK, so what's going on here? Well, what we're doing is we are saying, hey, 
if there's any type of response that's coming into us from a client and it's hitting the base URL, so this is, you know, www.google.com, it's not google.com slash whatever, it's google.com. So the base URL, whenever that happens, okay, someone goes to our base URL, um, what I want to do is I want to pass the request in. So req, that's typically what you write in for requests, or we can make it longer for request and response. And requests come from the client, responses go back to the client, okay? So what's happened here is the request from the client, it's getting dropped here in this function as a parameter, uh, and the response is what we'll actually send back, okay? So we can say response.send my first API, okay? So whenever something comes to the base URL, we do a get request, which get means we're going to fetch, okay? We're going to fetch something. Uh, what we're saying here is, let's go ahead and send something back to the client. Now, you always, 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 always have to send a response back. If you don't, your server will hang up and eventually crash, okay? So it's not enough, it, it, whether it's a get request or a post request where someone's like posting data to a database, it's not enough just to say, uh, just let it post and then let nothing happen. No, you've got to send something back to the client because the client is waiting for a response. The client is the client could crash too. It could sit there hanging and hanging and hanging, waiting. You have to send something back like success or failure of some kind. Uh, super important. Always, always, always send a response. Uh, never leave the um, never leave it open. Okay, or you'll get you'll get problems and crashes. So if someone comes to the URL, the base URL, let's go ahead and send something back. This text right here. And what response.send is doing is it's actually creating a JSON a file and it's uh, formatting this in JSON and sending it back. Okay, so this will convert it to JSON for us automatically. And um, we get that for free with Express. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say app.listen. And we're gonna say, let's listen on port 3000. Okay. And when uh, th this is a callback for when it successfully works. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say console.log um first api running on port 3000 okay I and mean, we could have blown through this real fast i'm just explaining it cuz um it's it's so simple but it's important to understand the base principles here so what we're doing here is uh we're listening for requests here on the get so if we get a get to this url uh, you could put anything here you want we could say you know funions and then if so, if it's mywebsite.com slash funions, then it'll come here. Whatever path you put in here is the path that the request is coming from on the website, okay? Or that you wanna hit. So app.listen, okay, what it's doing is it's actually creating a server, uh, opening a connection, and we're listening on a certain port. Uh, if you're not familiar with how uh, how computers work with, with internet and ports, that's okay. It's, it's very complex. Um, you can actually do some Google searching on how do ports and computers work, but basically uh, computers have ranges of ports that they can open up to listen for requests and usually the operating system of that computer, whether it's Linux or Mac or Windows, uh, it creates those uh, sockets and those ports and it can listen for incoming requests. We are specifying a very specific port of 3000. And then when it actually successfully opens up that port and that connection, uh, we go ahead and do a callback. This is on the successful opening of that. And then we're just printing something to the log here. Okay, so that's it. All we have to do now is actually run it. So I'm gonna go to my terminal. Okay, Command K on Win on Mac to clear it. And all we have to do is say Node. So using Node, we we run server.js. First API running on port 3000. Well, what does that even mean? What's going on? I don't I don't know what's going on. It says it's successful. Well, here is the fun part. All we have to do is type in localhost and then colon 3000. Okay, this is your local host on your computer. Okay. Um, and uh, all you have to do, or, or your IP address, you can do it, uh, you can search for your IP address and put that there instead of the local host. And all you have to do is um, put a forward slash and it sends back JSON to the client and the client renders it. So the browser knows how to render this. That is really cool. Okay, my first API. Okay, now what happens if I say, let's say Funyuns. Cannot get Funyuns. Well, that's silly. Let's kill our server, Control C. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, actually, let's leave that one here. And let's put another one here. 
app.get. Let's call this Funyuns. Oops. Funyuns. Rec res, which is more typical to see. Request and response. And then we can say res.send. Yo, give me some Funyuns foo. Okay. Now let's go back to the terminal and restart our server because we made changes. And then let's go back to our browser and let's refresh this page. Yo, give me some Funyuns foo. And what if I take off the Funyuns? My first API. So you've done it. What you've actually done here is very powerful. You've created your very own server. And not only that, it's a REST API on top of a server. And when a request comes in, it knows how to handle it. And then it sends data back to the client the client being whatever device is reaching out to your server. It could be another server or it could be a phone or a website. It doesn't matter, but this is really cool stuff. And you've just taken your very first step into back-end web development. That's what this is. This is back-end web development, also known as server development. Um, there's a lot of different ways of categorizing it. Some people like to say this isn't server development. This is just um, API development uh, or web development. Some people even call it web development, whereas they say the server stuff is more IT or configuring. Um, there, there is, it's really, really blurry, but, um, you can officially say that you have built your own API in node and with express and a client was able to talk to it. In this case, our client was the Google Chrome browser. So congratulations. We're just scratching the surface. If this is confusing, that's okay. There's more to come and this takes a lot of practice. That's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com moving on and forward. <laughs>